Hello, I'm Krista Schmieder and I'm the ceramics teacher at Corvallis High School and I wanted to give you guys a little summary of the first two assignments that you'll be seeing in your grade books if you're in beginning ceramics. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing we worked on were some pinch cups and we have these little tiny pinch cups. You can see um, they're all done by hand. They're not meant to be perfect. They should have an inside that can hold some kind of liquid and a foot ring around the bottom so that they can sit nicely on a table and be glazed really well. Um, the size really doesn't matter. You can see I've got some students that make them pretty tiny. These are gonna be great for testing out glazes as we get to the next projects. Um, I also have some students who make them super itty bitty and that's really fun because you can see uh, you have to be pretty detailed to get all those little foot rings on there. It's pretty cute. So that was the first project and we did those by pinching. Uh, just a reminder on the pinching, if you've not done this assignment yet, I don't want you to make coils, which are the little snakes. I don't want you to make a sheet of clay and wrap it up. I really want you to focus on pinching. And the reason we do that is because this process is a very, very slow version of the projects we're going to do on the wheel. By making it into a ball and opening it up and then slowly pinching the clay up correctly up to the top. And one thing you want to make sure when you're making your pinch cups is that you really focus on smoothing out the edge. You really want to make sure that you get that really nice and smooth. Otherwise, it'll crack when we put it in the kiln. And also, when you drink out of it, you want to make sure that it's really nice and smooth. So the second project we did, uh, we worked on a little rattle. And you can see here some versions. Um, we have a little bear. We have this little lovely little woman holding her blanket. And you can hear that they shake and make beautiful sounds. We also have a cute little mouse. Very, very nice. Um, so to make our rattle, no matter what you're making, you're going to start with two pinch cups. And don't make them very big, otherwise you're gonna have a lot of work to do. You're also going to roll a bunch of little tiny rattle balls to go on the inside. Now, when you get ready to close the two forms, you wanna make sure that you have a piece of paper towel and you put a few of your little rattle balls on the inside and we're gonna make a little package. You don't wanna squish them up and you're gonna put them inside one of the pieces. Um, and this paper towel is gonna to keep it from sticking. It's going to uh, make sure that those things can rattle around after we fire it. Then we're going to scratch this up and you want to make sure you scratch in multiple directions. So not only are we scratching in one direction, but we scratch in the other direction. And the reason we scratch in multiple directions is to make the edge of the pot like Velcro. If you put two smooth edges together, what ends up happening is when we fire them in the kiln, those smooth edges, they're together and then they pull apart even if you've smoothed them out and it makes a big crack in your piece. So if we can scratch them up and give them some teeth, then when we put them together, they can't pull apart. But you have to scratch both sides, otherwise it won't work. All right. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our two pieces and put them together. We're gonna take our two and then close it up with our rattles inside. And look, even without having to mush it up, it's already sticking, it's kind of cool. So then I'm gonna smooth it out. Get them all nice and connected. Smooth and smoothy, smoothy, keep smoothing all the way around. Now don't forget at the very end of this process, we need to poke a hole somewhere in our rattle because by putting these two pieces together, we've created kind of a little bomb to put in the kiln and we don't want it to explode once it fills with all the steam from the water. So you have to poke a hole in it somewhere. So don't forget. Tapping it around, see where they poke the holes. I think most of my students just poke the holes at the bottom and that's just fine. The steam will find any way out. All right. Now that you have this ball made out of your two pinch cups, you can scratch and attach on arms, a head, 
uh, little honey pots, mice ears, mice tails. Make sure you really scratch and attach on these little tiny pieces. Um, otherwise, they're gonna fall off in the kiln. Even the little eyes and nose, you need to scratch and attach those on. Um, and then once you're all done, poke a hole in it and turn it into the cart so you can get it grated and then we can glaze it up next week. Um, that's all I have for the first two projects. I look forward to sharing with you our first throwing assignment that we're doing next week. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend.